Hey everybody, welcome to another Digimedia Dude quick tutorial. I'm Marcelo Lewin, the Digimedia Dude. In this episode, I'm going to give you an overview of Pixlr, which is a free alternative to Photoshop. So let's get to it. So here we are at the Pixlr Editor web application. Now this is a web application running inside your browser. I've tested this in Safari, in Firefox, and in Chrome, and it seems to be pretty compatible. Now I've ran it on the Mac, but I'm sure it's very compatible with Windows as well. I did not try it on Windows Internet Explorer. Now when you get to the screen, you're able to create a new image. You can open an image from the computer. You can open an image from a URL or you can open an image from the library. Now to do that, you will have to create an account at pixlr.com. So I already have an account. So I'm going to go to login. I'm going to put in my password. Now I'm logged in. So let's go ahead and get a image. I'm going to go to file open and I'm going to open an image from my local hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and open this image. And there it is, there's my image. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the interface. At the top, you have your menu bar, which has a variety of options, including filters, lots of filters that you can add to an image. You have your toolbar, which has a variety of tools. The nice thing about this is that a lot of these tools are mapped to keyboard shortcuts exactly like in Photoshop. For example, the move tool is a V, the marquee tool is an M. This one is your toolbar options, which will change depending on the tool you select. Right here, you have a navigator, which once you're zooming into an image, you are able to navigate and move around. Here's your layers panel, which you can add layers, you can edit layers, you can add layer styles. And here you have your history panel. This is where you can actually see everything you've done and undo. So I'm going to show you real quick how to add filters. For example, here's a photograph I shot when I was in Boston. I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to vignette because I want to add a vignette to this. And here's my filter options panel, which I can move out of there. You can see I already added the vignette with the options. I can actually change it to make it bigger or smaller. So let's say that's a good one. Now I can also change the color of the vignette. We'll say a little bit on the red tide. Click on OK. Now we have that. Obviously, that is pretty ugly. Maybe what we can do is make it a little bit more on the green to match that green there. There you go. That's even uglier, but that's okay. If you like this, you click on OK or click on Cancel. The whole point here is just to show you how to add filters. Now you can see my history. It's added a history item, so I can go ahead and undo it by just going back. So now let's go to Adjustments and let's do a Brightness and Contrast. So we'll go ahead and adjust the brightness a bit and make it a little bit more contrasty. Again, I'm not trying to make this pretty because obviously I'm doing a good job of not making it pretty, but I'm just showing you how similar to Photoshop it is. Keep in mind, this is running inside your web browser and it's free, so you can't beat that combination. So that's opening files from your local hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and close it. No, I don't want to save it. I'm going to create a new image and this is the new image panel, which I'm going to call it testing and we'll just leave it at 800 by 600, which is fine. So there you go. Now you see I have a background here. It's locked. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it to unlock it. It becomes just a regular layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer that goes on top. I can move my layers around just like you do in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and pick my brush tool. I'm going to change the color to, let's say, red. And now let's draw a little bit. Now I can go into the layer. I can right click and I can say, just like in Photoshop, you can merge layers, you can flatten the image, you can duplicate the layers, but I'm going to go to layer styles. And within here, you can add drop shadow, inner shadow, bevel. You can see everything that we can do. Some of them have options. For example, if I do otter glow, you can see you can have the hardness, you can have the size, a variety of things. Again, here the point is to show you and give you a quick overview of Pixlr and how it can truly be an alternative to Photoshop if you cannot afford Photoshop or you need to work on a web browser and an image quickly. Now I can take and save this file by going file, save, and then I can save it to my computer or if you have an account, you can save it to Pixlr's library. Under my computer, I can save it as JPEG or I can save it as a PNG or I can save it as a layered Pixlr image. Now obviously you're not going to be able to open that up in Photoshop, but you can reopen it in Pixlr as a layered image. So we'll click on cancel on that. We'll close it up. Finally, I want to show you that you can open a Photoshop file and it brings it in pretty close to Photoshop. So let's go to open. Let's use this Photoshop file, which is one of my YouTube video images. We'll click on open and there it is. It loaded the file correctly. Now we're going to go to layers and we'll look at layers here. 
and you can see that it has all of my layers inside. Now these layer group are basically my folders that I create for the layers when I'm grouping them in Photoshop. So it's bringing those in as a separate layer. So again, it's not perfect at bringing in Photoshop files, but it does the job at least to open them and look at them. So you can see that I have my background here, which is locked. I have the image background. Then I have the title. Now the title should have been text layer, but it actually came in as a non text layer, which kind of makes sense because since this is running off of a browser, it won't have access to all the fonts that you may have created that Photoshop file with. So there you have it. This is a quick overview of the pixel editor. Will it replace Photoshop? Absolutely not. But if you need a quick photo editor on a web browser and you don't have access to Photoshop or any other photo editing application, this will definitely do the job. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click on the thumbs up button. I really would appreciate that. Also, remember to subscribe to my channel, DJ Media Dude. And if you have any comments, questions, or opinions, remember to post them right below. So until the next episode, I am the DigiMedia Dude. See you next time.